All right, so let's first do the review of these two games that happened today because the last game that's going to be happening today and the last game that's going to be happening on this opening weekend of the 2021 MLS season isn't going to start until two hours from now. And that I think when that game does take place between the Whitecaps and the Timbers, I, of course, will do an individual review on that game. But for both of these games, just like yesterday, where both of these games were high-profile high games, uh, we saw one of them that ended in a scoreless draw, and the game was kind of tight between both of these teams. And then we saw a, a game where it was a high-scoring score game, and while this one, you know, it turns out to be a very entertaining game at the end, it didn't really kind of start that way with the early part of this game kind of slow, and both teams kind of still shaking off that rust that they had in the offseason. But once this game got going, boy, oh boy, that's when the pace and and the excitement really got, especially what we saw in the second half. So, uh, there was six Galaxy players that was making the, their Galaxy debut in this game, while there was three Miami players that was making their Inter-Miami debut in this one. So, there was a lot of debut between both of these teams. Uh, 42 seconds into this game, we actually had a yellow card that was on the Angel gonzalez Paris, and that probably is one of the fastest yellow card we have seen in an MLS game and obviously LGP was not happy about that he complained to the ref saying that that was his first challenge I mean he should get a benefit of the doubt that it was his first challenge and you know in some way I kind of do agree with him because you know referee usually they're being a little bit lenient in terms of the fact that if you commit your first challenge and as long as it's not egregious that it's worthy a yellow card maybe maybe the referee will, will give you a free pass but that was not the case with this referee immediately gives a yellow card to LGP there uh the atmosphere was absolutely amazing in this game now I know there's going to be a lot of people that's when they see this the the crowd and how the supporter se section was pretty much packed in this game a lot of people are going to talk about about how this is probably going to be a COVID spread kind of event and things are not going to go be good and this is also going to be typical well of what floor that is where people are just being very crazy and just don't really care about socially distant kind of thing but you know at the end, end of the day you know i always still like the fact the fact that there was actually actually great atmosphere in some way this was probably as close as we, what we see in normal time when when we are expecting to have have uh teams that might have good atmosphere at at home provide the atmosphere for this one uh, as I said, this was a slow start for bo both of this team. Uh, they actually showed Tom Brady was attending this game. And, you know, I'm kind of surprised that Brady didn't actually attend a Quakes game before he actually attend an Inter-Miami game. Because, after all, Brady is from the Bay Area. And I'm thinking that, you know, he probably should have been a Quakes fan instead of maybe supporting for Inter-Miami. Unless maybe he he's secretly a Quakes fan and he's rooting for Inter-Miami so that, 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 that he, he can see this team beat the Quakes' most hated rival, that is the LA Galaxy. Um, in the 27th minute, we did finally got our, well, actually, no, it's not the 27th minute, but in the 22nd minute, we finally had the first shot on goal, and it goes to Gonzalo Higuain, and it was a relatively weak shot that was saved by Jonathan Bond. Ben Bond robbed Gonzalo Higuain after a WTF turnover from the Galaxy. Yeah, that, this Galaxy defends. I mean, today, there were points in this game I fought this Galaxy defend do did very well in stopping this inter miami attack but then there's times where it looked like the, the same old galaxy defense that that is making mistake at the back and fortunately this time uh their goalkeeper jonathan bond was a able to to kind of rescue cute them of potentially committing a bad def defensive mistake that led to a goal then lewis morgan had a free kick that just grazed over the right side of the board but then, as we head into halftime, it looked like this was going to end 0-0. Miami would get the opening goal of this game. And this was one of the two controversial play that we had in this game. Where it was Robbie Robinson that scored from Higuain and Pizarro. And the reason why I say there was there was a question mark for offside. And they actually look at VAR to see whether or not this was an offside goal. Was because when the ball was played to Pizarro, to Higuain... It looked like Higuain was in an offside position. And they actually showed two angles of that. Uh, one of them, it was really hard to tell whether or not if Higuain indeed was in an onside position. And originally, I thought it was Depew, the one that maybe have kept him onside. But then on the other angle, and the other angle they actually didn't show until when they, they finished checking the VAR. Basically, gives a much 
better angle where you know it wasn't actually Depute the one that was was thinking that maybe he kept Higuain on side, but it was actually um, who 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 was it that kept that was think that kept him on side. Oh God, I can't think of that play on uh, name or that Galaxy player name in my mind right now. But, you know, either way, you know, in that outer angle, it definitely looked like maybe Higuain's head was was swinging a little bit toward the right and in and offside side position. And there's no doubt that if this happened in the Premier League, there's no doubt they're going to get the rulers, they're going to get the lines out, and I have a feeling that's probably going to be a rule offside. But I guess maybe because MLS doesn't have that and maybe they think that it's, it's not definitive, uh, that's why it was not called offside. Like, when I originally look at it, and I have looked at it a couple of times, I really think Higuain, you know, with his motion, with his head, and also oh, his his right arm, it seems like that was in an offside position. But either way, uh, Inter Miami does get get that that goal count, and they head to halftime with a one nothing lead. Then, in the second half, they look to double that lead, but Jonathan Bond was able to deny Robinson of his second goal. And Inter Miami really start out strong strong in the second half and I also wrote later while the Galaxy continued to struggle to get anything going forward and right as when I, I wrote that down just 10 seconds later Chicharito scores from Zubac to tie the game up for the Galaxy that's would be first of two goals that Chicharito would score in this game and he actually matched the the same amount of goals that he scored all season long uh, in today's goal goal total and also that was a beautiful ball that was delivered from from Ethan Zubak who I thought the Zubak substitution really changed this game he would he seems to 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 be much more dynamic go, going up front uh compared to when they didn't have him on the pitch and he feeds a good ball to Chicharito to slot that one in the near post but the Galaxy equalizer didn't last long because Inter Miami would actually win a penalty just four minutes later. And it was Villafania, the one that bought Pizarro in the box. Now, originally, they did kind of check to see whether or not if that indeed was a penalty. Now, I do understand that it seems like Pizarro kind of draw that foul and the way that he kind of stick his leg out of Villafania and basically, basically tumble to the ground. But when you look on the replay, it looked like Villafania hips was kind of po pointing toward, toward Pizarro. And when you decide to, to go put your hips pointing in and, and putting t toward the attacker, you know the attacker is going to tr try to use that as an advantage and try to draw that fa foul. And in the end, I think that was a smart play that Rodolfo Pizarro did here to draw the penalty. And Higuain, who, you know, m remember what happened the first time when he took a penalty against the Union where he b basically blazed that over the bar and then he kind of got into to a scuffle with a couple of Union players that w was letting him to hear, hear about that. That missed penalty where he just skies it into the stands. Well, this time he makes no mistake and puts that one away to restore Inter Miami lead up to that point. But unfortunately, that lead did not last long because Chicharito would score again just four minutes later. And I feel like this was was one that McCarthy definitely want to have have it back because you know this ball was coming in to the box. McCarthy did not do a good job in terms of punching this one away and actually punch it straight in to the path of Chicharito that was in the right place and the right time. He basically said, thank you very much. I'll just tap it into the back of the net. And just like that, the game was all tied up at two apiece. And then eight minutes later, the Galaxy would take the lead for the very first time. It's Sasha Kleshton that scores from Sebastian Legit. What a beautiful strike that was from Kleshton to basically not only freeze the goalkeeper with that shot, but basically just clip this one on the left side of the post to go get it into the back of the net. And just like that, the Galaxy were up 3-2 in this game, in a game where Inter Miami, you know, for majority of this game, they really do dominated. But, you know, it seems like the Galaxy, when they had the chances to to put the ball into the back net, they were able to do so. Though they, though Inter Miami was looking to make this make this game 3-3 free free when, when two minutes later, uh, Jonathan Bond was was able to once again deny Gonzalo Higuain. And then his brother that came on just just a couple of minutes ago, Federico Higuain smashed one that just went went wide from about 14 yards out. Then in, in stoppage time, uh, the Galaxy looked like they were trying to finish this game up and make it 4-2 uh, when Dunbar actually went through on goal, but McCarthy was able to deny him. And then in the last kick of the game, Figal had a golden opportunity to tie this game up at three apiece when... A free kick was coming in toward his 
his mark. And, you know, I talk about the Galaxy defense in this game. Not really. There was time where they were doing a good job, but there were also times where they were they were not doing a great job whatsoever. And this was an example of it where they just lit leave Figuel wide open in that back post. And the fact that Figuel wasn't able to put that one in, it's, it's just got to be a huge disappointment if you're into Miami. But also kind of just sums up how they just had so many good opportunity in this game. And I know they did score two goals in this one, but they clearly should have scored, scored more with the opportunity that they had in this game. And it turns out to, to haunt them in the end, because in the end, the Galaxy was able to come from behind and win 3-2 in this game as the shots of this game 19 shots compared the six that the galaxy had eight shots on goal compared the five that the galaxy had eight shots off target compared the none that the galaxy had three shots that was blocked compared the one that la has and possession wise 66 percent possession compared to 34 percent possession that inter miami has in this game and besides the possession miami clearly dominated every category of of the stat chart but you know this was just one of those games when you know one team was able to be a little bit more clinical in front of goal and that is the LA Galaxy and one team was not able to take advantage most of the chances and that's Inter Miami and as a result that is the reason why the Galaxy were able to walk out of this game with all three points but either way this was a very entertaining game especially in the second half where it really got very intense with both teams seems to go go going going end-to-end -end action in the latter part of the second half but now moving on into the next match which which was was the game that people bill as the mls super cup between the defending supporter shield champion versus the defending mls cup champion and you know in this game you kind of had a fe feel feeling that that you know maybe this could be be a game that could be very physical with the way that both both of these teams was involved in ccl and we've seen before where when teams MLS team does involve in CCL. They tend to come back to league plays with a lot of physical kind of play because they kind of learned that trait with, during the, their CONCACAF Champions League campaign. And it seemed like that was the case in this game. I mean, there was a lot of physical play in this game, a lot of yellow card in this game. And because there was also a lot of yellow cards and physical play during this game, there was also a lot of stop and go action. And this game never really got that that good flow that you were hoping for where maybe we can see some some goals and good action as what we saw in this game between Inter Miami and the LA Galaxy. Now the Union they decided to go with the same lineup while Columbus they pretty much returned their big guns up front in the star 11 with Santos, uh, Zardes and also Zarian all three of them are up front you know no besides Zarian and, and Santos that did make a couple of good impact and that that them also had a couple of opportunity to to score the opening goal in this game. I didn't think Zardes had had a good game whatsoever. He he relatively had a quiet game in this. But this is the thing about Jersey Zardes. You know he could have a a a game where you might think he 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 might have a quiet game and he's not involved, and then all of a sudden he gets a good ball ball toward him and he can just easily slot it into the back net and be that match winner. But unfortunately, that just didn't seem. Like that was the case. It's pretty much throughout this game, uh, he wasn't really involved whatsoever. But that also give you got to give credit to the union with the way that he, they really shut down Zardes in this game and making sure he doesn't get any opportunity to get a good look at goal and score the goals for the crew. Now in the first half and just 20 seconds into this game, uh, Diaz had a good opportunity that was denied by Andre Blake. Also, both goalkeeper in this game was really on top of the game. And, you know, both of these goalkeeper coming into this game for the Union and the crew are two of the best goalkeeper. And I think after this game, you, you can probably tell why exactly that is the case. Because, um, you know, besides Columbus start out as the better side in the first 15 minutes, Eloy Room would rob Shabilko on a free header. Before, there was actually, actually a controversial call where there was no penalty given. Well, actually, I wouldn't say this was controversial, but there, there was no penalty kick call for Columbus after their Elliott made contact with Diaz. And while Jack Elliott did make some contact with Diaz, I didn't think that was, was, was a lot of contact. And that if that was given a penalty, I think that would have been a very soft penalty. But that being said, we have seen before in this league where there has been soft penalty that is given. So... You know, you know, if that was given a penalty, I wouldn't be surprised by it at all because it just looks like it's going to be one of those soft penalties that the referee have just, just given to one of these teams. Now, it was a sloppy start for both of these teams and there was just a lot of 
of turnovers, especially in the middle of the field. Uh, then Zyrion hit hit one from 24 yards out that actually actually struck the post. Before four minutes later, VAR was used for the the first time today, and it actually overruled a Columbus penalty after it being Glassness was 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 basically. Or Glassness fouled Santos outside the box. And in the end, that was the correct call. Because when you saw on the replay, it is pl pretty clear that Glassness actually fouled, fouled uh, Pedro Santos outside the box. And, and that it, instead of this being a penalty, it's just going to be be a free kick just outside the area. And also, Glassness did get a yellow card because of that. Now, now unfortunately, that, that free kick that, that the crew had didn't really resort into anything. And overall, we had to have time with a nil nil scoreline. But heading into the second half, you know, there was a couple of half chances for both of these teams early. Uh, Blake denied Diaz on a close-range effort in the 58th minute. But for Bedoya, was the latest victim of the post as he struck it in the 63rd minute. Uh, the game, as I mentioned, it continued to kind of be, be a little bit disjointed. And, you know, even though during this spell where... We thought that maybe the game can open up a little bit. It immediately went back to that disjointed play where, you know, both of these teams weren't really linking up passes very well. And also, we continue to see a lot of fouls that happen in this game. Uh, and just a lot of physical play that happened for, throughout throughout this one that makes makes the game very stop and go and very disjointed and I also thought as we get closer into the 90th minute it seemed like this is this is also going to be a one goal game where whoever is going to score this first goal will win this one uh the union had a chance or the crew actually had a chance to do so in the 82nd minute but Andre Blake was able to deny him and actually if this one one actually went in from our tour it wouldn't have counted because the offside flag was actually up after Blake makes that incredible save. And then just two minutes later, uh, F FS1 decided to do that Spongebob meme where, you know that there's that classic Spongebob meme where it says, right, I'm about to head out. Well, that's what FS1 decided to do that. I mean, it basically stopped working for a couple of minutes. Now, fortunately, it did go get back a couple of minutes later. But when it was turned back on, it basically left, left where we where the feed basically got cut off. So that means the game was actually a couple of minutes ahead of when the broadcast is actually on. And I'm not sure if if anybody else actually had this problem. I, I've i heard that people seem to have that problem when you are watching it on a streaming device or on a cord cutter. But I don't think people were having having problem when they were watching it on on a, a cable network but yeah you know fs1 and in, in general fox hasn't really been doing a good job in terms of, of their feed and you know i can see why there's a lot of people that is complaining that about the coverage that fox have been doing I mean, with mls action and there's also some that might even say that in the next tv broadcast deal that mls has maybe fox should not be involved in that and should and mls should not renew fox or fs1 to broadcast these highly national televised game because imagine if the feed cut off here and then when it and then during the the time when the feed is cut off a goal was actually scored and we will actually know don't know know what what actually led to that goal actually go goes in and turns out to maybe be the winner of this game that would have been a very frustrating thing to see now, three minutes later, after the FS1 feed decided to, to take a break, uh, Eloy Room was able to deny Bodoya from long range before Room actually denied San Santos in stoppage time. And Philly was really pr pressing to try to get the winner. You know, I was thinking maybe Columbus was going to do that because knowing the fact that the Union is a road team. And when you're a road team, when you get to this point where the game is kind of very even and, and you know, it's just, it feels like, like, like one goal is enough to win the game for both of these teams. I've seen a lot of time where road team tends to sit back a little bit and, and are just happy with a point. And especially in a big, big kind of marquee matchup like this, uh, the road team always want, wants to just sit back and tr trying to take, take a point away on the road against a very, very good team. And especially a, a team like Columbus that doesn't lose at home, home very often, but instead they actually go for, for it and we're looking to grab all three points but unfortunately it, they 
they weren't able to do so. And in the end, it was a goalless draw between the Columbus crew and the Philadelphia Unions. It's the shots in this game. 12 shots compared to 15 that Philly has. 6 shots on goal compared to 5 that the Union has. 5 shots off target compared to 8 that the Union has. 1 shot that was blocked compared to 2 that the Union has in possession wise. 48% possession compared to 52% possession that Philly has in this game. And overall, when you look at the balance of how this game played, yeah, it, a goalless draw I think is a fair resort for for both both of these teams. And you know, both of these teams will now have to move, move on into the next game and hope, hope then that, you know, they can get their attack going again, he heading into the next one. Because it seemed like the defense for both of these teams were the story of this game. And also, the goalkeeper of both of these teams were very solid. And that is probably one, one of the reasons, besides the fact that this game was very physical and very disjointed, that this game basically ended in a goalless draw. But yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of the review of both of these games. Like I said, since the next game is not going to start until about an hour and a half from now, that's why I decided to review these two games and then review the, the Timbers versus Whitecaps game a little bit later tonight as just a single game. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of both of these games. And yeah, I hope to see you guys next time.